Hey everyone, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the 2020 Ram 2500 Laramie. And this comes with Ram's 17-speaker Harman Kardon 750-watt audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review of the system, I'm going to listen to some sample tracks, take a look at the very large infotainment screen, take a look at the sound settings, and drive it around, and give you my impressions at the end. So before we get started, let's hop out take a quick look at this truck now this thing is a real looker rocking rams flame red paint along with some black wheels with white lettering which you don't see too often but i kind of like how it works with this color combo if you want to see more on this big old 6.7 liter diesel take a look for our full review That'll be up soon, and when it is, the link will be in the description. All right, let's go around and take a look at some speaker grill locations. So as I said, this is a 17-speaker system, but there are places where they've got multiple speakers in one speaker grill. So let's just see where they're located. We've got one, two, three up front here on the dash, then four, five, six, seven, that side eight nine and then in the right here 10 and 11. so i know there is a subwoofer hidden somewhere not sure if it's under the seat or if it's under the center console or what we can certainly tell it's there and like i said there are other speakers that are hidden in the grills All right, so in terms of audio inputs, we've got a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, as well as your standard AM FM series satellite radio. We've got two USB A's and USB C's here, two USB A's and two USB type C's in the back, and a USB A right here. We also got Bluetooth, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay support. So what are you missing? Well, you don't have a CD player, but that's not all too common these days, so we won't give the RAM too much heat for it. Now, as always, we've got a USB stick with uncompressed WAV audio files plugged directly into the system, and high-quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you guys the most realistic audio experience available on YouTube. We always do these tests with all the audio settings set to their factory defaults. So here we see we've got left, right, front, rear, balance, and fader, Equalizer here with three settings. So let's see, you got full bass, mid range. Oh, and the song is ending, so let's actually just restart that one. Oh, this is. Oh, there we go. Here's full mid. and treble. On top of that, you've got speed adjusted volume, a surround sound setting. So you can see this is with it on, then off. Just doesn't seem to be coming from behind and in front of you as much, more just from the side. So we'll leave it on for now. Maybe we'll able to turn it off later on. And then that is it for audio adjustments. Now this big old screen works better than some of the big screens in, say, Subarus, but not as good as some of the big screens in, say, a Tesla. But it's fairly responsive, all of Chrysler systems work pretty well, it's intuitive, it takes good advantage of the screen space, especially when you're in, like, the map, for example. I actually kind of prefer the smaller Uconnect system, I just think it's, it does everything that this system does with a little less map space. Maybe a little bit more clicking, but more physical buttons available in the center stack. But this one is pretty decent. So let's switch this track up here. Whoops. What do we need to do? Let's go in this direction. Before we do that, let's fire it up. Oh yeah, diesel. Let's get on the road. 
Audio inputs in the RAM, or I should say audio controls, you've got a big old nice volume knob here. It's a little easy to turn, but it does have nice detents. Then you also have rear mounted steering wheel audio control here. I really like to see that. For track control, you've got a rear mounted on the left side of the steering wheel. You have a track tuning knob here, and you also have your virtual buttons. Now that we're up to highway speed, I'll turn the music down, let you get an idea for what the truck sounds like at 75 miles per hour. It's really more refined than I expected initially when we got this truck. There's some road noise and some wind noise, but the engine noise is better than I expected and really all of the cabin noise is not too bad. Good on ramp. So, 17 speakers, 750 watts, Harman Kardon tuning, what does that all amount to? Well, it's pretty good. <laughs> Especially for large trucks like this, it's definitely the best. Chevy's Bose is decent, but not to this level. Ford system, 
I think they're on the B&L Play now. It's been a while since I've heard one of those, so to be fair, it could blow me away, but I've never heard anything from Ford that's put out anything more than okay. So I wouldn't get my hopes up. <laughs> this Harman Kardon system really is it when it's talking about the truck game. I've also spent a lot of time with the Harman Kardon system in the Ram 1500. That one sounds just as excellent as this one. It's really incredible how much bass they're able to put out in this truck cabin configuration. The only thing that's frustrating with this system is whoever tuned it decided that there should be a ton of bass and that's about it. I find myself often needing to turn the bass down. I'll bring up the settings, bring up the equalizer, do bass down to like negative three or four and treble up just one or two. And then that just makes for a crisper, more natural sound. Maybe I'd actually go for this type of song, maybe I'd do the bass negative too. So if I were given an objective rating to the Ram, Ram 2500's 15, sorry, 17 speaker sound system, I think I'd give it about an 8. It's really quite good, quite capable, just has some tuning deficiencies. Now if I were rating it subjectively in its class of heavy duty trucks, it's getting a 9, maybe even 9.5 for how well this system works. Hope you guys were able to get a good idea of how the system works some of its pros and cons. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a bunch. If you want to see more on this truck, check out the link in the description when it posts for our full review. If you're still waiting on it, then just hit that subscribe button. It'll be coming soon. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.